You're listening to a podcast developed and produced by the Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations, APCHO. To learn about APCHO, its members, or the principles and values that have guided this organization's work for more than 20 years, please visit www.aapcho.org. You can also find APCHO on Facebook. Fiona Ma was elected to the California State Assembly in November 2006 and has since then authored groundbreaking legislation on a range of important issues. These include protecting young children from dangerous chemicals, increasing access to quality health care, and preventing the spread of hepatitis B. Assemblywoman Ma, who is a carrier of hepatitis B, has for years helped lead the effort to ensure that all Asian and Pacific Islander Americans are aware of the disease and the vaccine. Today, APCHO's Director of Communications, Stacey Lavilla, speaks to Assemblywoman Ma over the phone about her inspiration and advice for hepatitis B advocacy. Fiona, your fight against hepatitis B over the past few years has really impacted and galvanized Hep B advocacy across the country, including San Francisco's much lauded Hep B Free Campaign. Can you speak a bit on how your personal battle with the disease has influenced your professional work on this movement? Uh, I really didn't know that I had any type of problems until I was 22 years old. And at my first job, I signed up to give blood with the uh, blood drive. And the results um, came back saying that they could not accept my blood, that I had bad blood. Um, And so that kind of led me to ask my parents what this meant, um, hepatitis B. And my mom basically said not to worry that I was a carrier and it's, it's not a problem. Um, so I kind of went for the next uh, 20 years um, not paying much attention um, to this. And it wasn't until I did a press conference with Asian Week and Dr. Sam Zhou where I repeated, you know, the fact that I, I'm a carrier of hepatitis B and, and that I don't have any symptoms or problems, and therefore you know, I'm fine, and Dr. So, after the press conference, pulled me aside and said, well, that's not true. Uh, You actually have chronic hepatitis B, and that you actually need to take care of yourself because one out of four people like you are going to develop serious uh, liver cancer or liver damage um, requiring a transplant. So that kind of when my eyes opened, I called my doctor immediately and, you know, asked her, you know, how come nobody's told me anything like this, and how come I'm not doing any checkups? And uh, so she called me in and did a thorough um, sonogram on my liver, and uh, also proceeded to give me hepatitis A shots, uh, the vaccination for hepatitis A as a precaution. And so it was really, you know, about two years ago that I started to, you know, pay more attention to my health. Um, you know, I quit drinking alcohol. Um, and just, you know, make sure that every year I get a a sonogram. And um, I feel like part of my job as an elected official is to talk about uh, these things that are personal to me but also could have an impact on other folks. And I think the only way we're going to raise awareness is if we actually talk about it. What advice can you provide to grassroots organizations, local councils, churches, schools, or parent groups who want to take part in advocating for Hep B education and treatment? Well, um, every May is National Hepatitis B Awareness Month, and I think that's the perfect time for uh, organizations to, you know, talk about this, to focus it in their newsletters, um, to ask their local city councils to pass resolutions, or even their school boards uh, to pass resolutions, you know, supporting uh, the awareness and, you know, asking everyone to go and, you know, talk to their doctors and make sure that they uh, know for sure whether they have hepatitis B or not. And also groups, you know, when you're talking to them, you know, I normally start it out with asking uh, folks if they know for sure whether they have hepatitis B or not and to raise their hand. And very few hands go up. As you know, this May 19th is World Hepatitis Day. For many national HEPI advocates, 2009 will be an especially important year for building out and executing a national plan to really make hepatitis B an issue on the minds of policymakers, health providers, and members of the Asian American community. What do you envision will be the key components to doing this successfully from a local and national standpoint? I think the more we can coordinate at the local and the national level would definitely help. Uh, We've got a great 
uh, spokesperson, uh, advocate at the federal level, Congressman Mike Honda, has really taken on this cause and is trying to uh, provide more federal funding and raise awareness and, you know, try to get more folks, um, you know, preventative care versus uh, covering folks when they have um, late stage liver cancer or require a, a liver transplant. I mean, clearly that is too late. Uh, so trying to, you know, launch a campaign um, I think is very helpful. In San Francisco, we've been very successful with our San Francisco Hep Be Free uh, campaign to bring all stakeholders, uh, providers, insurance companies, uh, pharmaceuticals, health clinics, both private and public, uh, to the table uh, to try to eradicate it here locally. And uh, Hep Be Free Santa Clara now uh, has launched their campaign to replicate that model. And I think um, if we could uh, replicate that across country in different Asian hubs, um, I think it's going to go a long way to uh, raising the awareness and, and getting folks treated here in the U.S. And Fiona, was there anything else that you wanted to add? Well, I, I think we need to do more um, yeah. in, in terms of not only educating uh, the patients but also to the medical community. Uh, there are still a lot of doctors who uh, don't uh, understand um, uh, the, um, the problem in the Asian community and uh, next year, I'm going to introduce legislation that encourages hepatitis B education for physicians. Um, I think that is critical also in terms of trying to get the providers uh, to do this, uh, to do the testing proactively and ask their patients. So it's kind of a two-part. Not only are we educating uh, the patients to go and ask, but we also need to educate the doctors to make sure that they're doing a necessary test. So um, we still have a lot of work to do, and I look forward to uh, continuing, continuing to work on this issue. Fiona Ma, thank you for sharing your knowledge, your personal story, and for all of your hard work on this issue. Thank you. This podcast was brought to you by APCHO with generous support and guidance from its Technical Innovation Advisory Committee members who share APCHO's vision of equitable, affordable, and culturally and linguistically appropriate health care for all. Please be sure to visit our website at www.apcho.org for more podcasts or to reach us with your comments and questions.